Hello and welcome to this build guide video for Kerbal Space Program 2 for science. So in this video we're going to be building this rocket, which is an early game uh, medium lift rocket. It mainly uses tier 1 parts, although it does have a few exceptions to that, including the main command module and the fuel lines. Uh, which we will get into in a moment but as you can see um, I've split the rocket up into its various different stages and just as with my level 1 or tier 1 moon lander um, it uses the same principles of generally getting smaller as it goes up so as you go through the launch you're jettisoning the heavy parts and each subsequent set of engines is then uh, more efficient and of course the key difference with this one is we are also going to be using a two-stage lander so on this lander we have the descent stage which will get us onto the surface of the moon and then we also have the ascent stage which gets us back into orbit around the moon and ideally it would get us um, to rendezvous with the command module as well because we are going to be doing a rendezvous and docking maneuver in that video um, but yeah let's get on with the build obviously the first thing we need to do is buy some science so we will start off by going to the research and development building. And once we're here, the first thing we are going to buy is struts because we are going to be using struts in this build. Uh, we also need to get research in miniaturization. So we'll start off by buying power management and research in miniaturization. And that will give us the Science Junior Junior, which is basically a smaller version of the normal science junior so we'll grab that we're also going to grab long range probes as well because we are going to pop a small probe on this rocket to complete the lonely satellite mission and we're also going to grab basic docking and i believe that is everything we need from tier one now we're going to actually buy our first bits of tech from tier two and all we need is the medium orbital rockets which will give us the gumball command pod the heat shield and the poodle and of course the medium decoupler as well and the other thing we need is fuel lines and this is probably the most important part we need for this build so yeah let's get straight into the actual build shall we Right, so let's start with the top of this rocket to begin with so the first thing we'll do is we'll go to command and grab the gumball command pod and then we're going to pop a heat shield on the bottom of that and we need to use the HS250 medium heat shield because we're using medium parts now and then on top of that we're going to grab a small uh, monopropellant tank and we're also going to go to utilities and pop the small reaction wheel on as well now because we are going to be using a separate lander with this we are going to need to dock with the command module in space so for that we go to coupling and we're going to grab the Clampertron docking port, pop that on the top. Uh, now, of course, we're going to need some solar panels and some parachutes as well. So before we go any further, I'm just going to quickly clip the reaction wheel down into the monopropellant tank, just because it looks a bit better and it's not quite so tall. And then we'll first of all go to electrical and we're going to grab the extra small solar panels again. And we're going to pop four of these on the side of the reaction wheel and then for the parachutes we will use the mark 12 radial parachute and we're going to pop three of these on because we don't want to pop four on because if we do we'll end up blocking the door and although we don't need to use this to do eva it's always good to have the door free as well so we'll pop them on and we're also going to use the mark 16 radial mount drogue parachutes for this one and we'll pop them on as well and once again we're going to use three of those so for the lander, the first thing we need to do is we need to put a decoupler on because we can't actually uh, right click and set the clampertron to decouple at the moment or to you know, be in the staging stack. So what we'll do is we'll start off by going to coupling and we're going to grab the TS12 stack separator this time. And the reason we're using a separator instead of a decoupler is because the engine is going to be on top of the decoupler as well and if we only used a decoupler um, then we'd either block the docking port or we'd block the engine and we could end up blowing the engine up so we'll use a separator for this and then of course for the engine we're going to go and grab the terrier engine and pop that on the decoupler or the separator even and then when it comes to tanks we're only going to use small tanks for this so we'll start off by going to fuel tanks and grabbing the flt 200 
And as I said, this is a two-stage lander, so we're going to need a small decoupler this time. And we're going to use another Terrier engine. And for the uh, ascent half of the lander, we're going to just use the smallest um, FLT100 Methlox tank and pop that there. Now, we could just leave it at that for the fuel, um, but I always like to have quite a bit of uh, monopropellant on as well. So we're also going to add a monopropellant fuel tank. And I'm just going to clip that down a little bit, just so that it's just inside of the Methlox tank. So now we need the actual landing pod. So for that, we're going to use the Explorer Mark I landing pod. The tuna can would be way too big for this, so we're going to use that one and pop that on top. And then, because we need to dock with the command module, we also need to add the Clampertron docking port as well. So we'll pop that on there. Now, of course, we are going to need some solar panels and uh, RCS for this. So let's first of all start off by popping the solar panels on. And I'm going to pop four on the sides. And we could just leave it at that. But just for the look of it, I'm also going to add a couple of solar panels as well. Going to two, red, uh, two symmetry. And that way we get six solar panels and we should have a fairly decent coverage of uh, light when it comes to it. And then, of course, as I said, we do need the... Um, Monop uh, the RCS thrusters as well so we'll go to utility and grab our RV105s and we'll pop four of these on the top part of the lander and we're also going to pop four of these on the bottom and we could mess around with our center of um, mass um, try and get them perfect but I'm just going to leave it at that and as in the last video I'm going to right click on them I'm going to go to advanced controls and turn off pitch and yaw because that should just mean that we uh, will have a bit more control and it won't be affecting our orbits quite so much when we are trying to manoeuvre the lander. So of course the only other thing we really need on this is landing legs. So for that we'll go to ground and we're going to use the small wallaroo landing legs again and we'll pop four of these on the bottom and then just for uh, an extra little bit of um, illumination, as it were, when we are landing, we're going to try and put some lights on the bottom of the engine as well. So for lights, we'll go back to utility. There we are, yeah. And we're going to grab the small dome lights or the extra small dome lights. We're just going to pop four of these on the bottom of the engine. And that just means that if we are landing in the dark, we should have a little bit better idea of uh, where, our, well, where the ground is in relation to the lander now one thing um we could just leave it at that but one thing i am going to do because we do have another mission available which is lonely satellite is i'm actually going to add a probe core to this so what i often like to do is I often like to actually add a probe core to the bottom half of a two-stage lander because that means that then when we leave the half on the moon it won't be designated as debris uh, which means that it will stay there and we won't end up accidentally deleting it so we'll go to command and we're going to grab the lighter of the two probe cores which is the octo probe core we'll pop that there and now all we can do is we can pop the the coupler back on top and use the rotate and translate tool just to move it down so that it's actually in line with the top of the fuel tank And now, one thing I have found, though, is that when we do it just like that, if we were to take the top off again, you can see that the uh, top of the octo is actually sticking out, and when we activate this engine, it'll blow up the um, probe core. So we're going to move it down until it's actually well within the tank. But then what we need to do is move the decoupler up so that that doesn't accident, well, it doesn't clip, uh, because then it can cause issues with decoupling so that should do the trick there and now all we need to do is pop the lander back on top and the only other thing that we could do with doing is adding a nose cone I guess um, although we do need to add a um, communitron as well so I'll tell you what we'll pop a small communitron on the bottom or the smallest one there is we'll just throw one of them on there then as I say we'll pop a nose cone on top so for that we'll use a small td12 decoupler and we're going to flip it upside down because that way when we decouple we're not going to leave the uh, decoupler there and it won't block the po 
port. So, as I say, we want the nose cone. We'll pop that on. And then we can just use the uh, rotate and translate tools to move that down a bit. And that's the top of the rocket done. So now it is just down to doing the main stage, so or the main core of the rocket. So for this, it's going to be, as I showed you before, a multi-stage rocket. So we'll begin by adding the medium TD25 decoupler. And under that, we'll go to fuel tanks. We're going to grab the X208 Methalox tank and pop that there. And for the engines, we will use the Koodle engine. And now we could also add some more RCS to this as well because we do have the monopropellant tank. So we'll pop a few RCS thrusters on. And then it's just a matter of going on to the next stage. So for this stage, we will grab the decoupler again. And this time we're going to grab a X208 Methalox tank and an X216 Methalox tank. Pop that there. For the engine, we are going to use the skipper engine. Then we're going to add another decoupler. We're going to go back to tanks, add the FL208 again, and this time an FL232. And now this is where things get a little bit more complex because we're not going to use a single engine on the bottom of this. We're going to use multiple engines. And if you've already unlocked uh, engine plates, it does make this a little bit easier when it comes to building the next stage. But we'll put the engines on first and I'll explain why in a second. So we'll begin. We're going to use the Terrier engines for this stage. And we'll pop one in the middle. And then we're going to pop another six around the edge. So if we go into the edge like that, we can then increase our um, symmetry to six symmetry and we'll place them on there and now the reason why it gets complicated um, when building the next stage is if you had an engine plate you would now have a node to put the next decoupler however because we have no engine plate it's just going to clip itself onto whichever one it comes to first so the way i found to get around this if you're doing this technique is if you go to the rotate and translate tool and grab the center engine and then pull that down you've now separated the bottom node from that engine from the rest so we'll pop the decoupler on that we're also going to get rid of the fairing and then we'll just use the rotate and translate tool again just to bring it back up to where it needs to be there we go now when doing this, we are going to need to add struts uh, to basically keep them from wobbling because now the decoupler is only connected to the one small engine in the middle, which can make it very unstable. But we'll begin by putting the first tank on of the next stage, which admittedly, this is the core stage in the main stage. So we're all going to use three X232s. So we'll just pop three of these on here. And then what I would recommend when it comes to doing the struts is, if we go and find them, they're in structure. Uh, what I would like, ordinarily like to do is do an X pattern. So we'll pop one there, one there, and then we can't go across. And we can do another diagonal and then what we're going to do is we are going to actually repeat that pattern all the way around but i'll do that later on in the video so we can just get straight on with the rest of the build so for the engines on the bottom stage we are going to use another similar configuration here um, we're going to use multiple engines so we're going to start off by grabbing the swivel engine and we're going to put one of those in the center and now you could just put another six swivels around the edge, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab the swivel engine again. I'm going to go to radial symmetry and then pop two there. And then we're actually going to use reliant engines as well. And we're going to pop two of these on here, if it'll work. There we go. I'll try and space them out so they're not too close to the other engines because we don't want the engine bells actually clashing with each other and then we're going to do the same thing over this side as well it can be a little bit awkward but you'll get there eventually 
And the reason we're doing that is because the Reliant engines don't actually gimbal, whereas the swivel engines do. And we do need to have gimbling engines on this just so that we've got a bit of control. So the three center engines are going to be the gimbling engines, and then the two or the four outer engines will be non-gimbling. Uh, but the reason we're doing that is because if you look at the stats, you can see that the max thrust in atmosphere for the swivel engine is 181 kilonewtons, whereas with the Reliant it's 221, so that just gives us a bit of extra power uh, during the initial ascent and should help us get off the surface. And now, the only other thing that I would do for this stage is add some nose cones to the top of the engines, just so that they look nice. And then, the other thing we'll do is we'll add some stabilizers. So we could just use the normal stabilizers, but I'm actually going to use the conversion um, control surfaces for this. And I'll tell you what, we might as well pop six on the side. So we've got six symmetry. And we're going to place them like this. And now, we need to build our side boosters. Now, the side boosters... Um, are key in this because we do need them to get off the ground because if we check out, out our engineered report we'll see that we have a very low thrust to weight ratio although the staging stack hasn't been set up yet so that would probably fix itself once we've done although we'll still be below one uh, thrust to weight one to zero and uh, we need to be way, way above one to zero to actually get off the ground so for the main boosters or the side boosters should I say what we're going to do is we're going to grab the TT38K radial decoupler and pop six of these on the side. And for these end, these tanks even, we're going to use the small tanks again. So we'll use three FLT800s. We'll pop one there, we'll pop one there, and we will pop one there. And then we're also going to add an FLT400 on the bottom. And for the engines, we're just going to use the Reliant engine again. Now, there is a very important uh, thing that we need to do with this. Um, if we were to just leave it at that, then what would happen is when we launch, these tanks would empty, and also the tanks on the core stage would empty as well. However, what we actually want to do is we want to have it so that these tanks empty first, and then the core stage empties afterwards. So to do that, what you need to do is, if we go to fuel tanks, we can grab the fuel line, and now, we need to make sure that we place the fuel line on the outer tank first and have it going towards the inner tank. Because if you look at fuel lines, you can see there are little arrows on it. And that means now that the fuel will be flowing out of these tanks and into those tanks. Meaning that the fuel from these tanks will power these engines and the outer engines. And then once these tanks are empty, we would jettison the uh, side boosters and that will leave the central tanks full. And then, yeah, we'll have the full central tank to carry on the burn. So that is the most important thing when you're using Methalox fuel tank um, side boosters. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, all there is to building this rocket. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to add some more struts, I'm going to add the separation boosters to the side boosters and i'm also going to do a little bit of tweaking just to make sure that everything's as it needs to be so i'll uh, see you in a moment
So there we are, now that's done. I'll just take you through a few of the things that I did. So as you might have seen, I just closed a few gaps, uh, moved the solar panels in a little bit as well, although I did miss them ones there, so I'll just pop them in now. And of course, we also uh, added some separation boosters to the side boosters and as i explained in my tier one moonlander video i like to have them just angled outwards just because that seems to give it a slightly more controlled uh, push away from the rockets and of course we've also put two or four on the top and two on the bottom and the reason for that is it just means that the uh, top ones will kick the solid boosters away from the bottom a little bit harder or from the rocket a little bit harder and you get a slightly uh, more pleasant um, fall away profile. Of course, the other thing I did was I created the cage around the engines for the second stage. We're using struts and added some launch clamps as well. Now, we could have just added launch clamps in the center of the tanks, which would be perfectly fine. But personally, I like the way that looks. The only thing you need to do when doing anything like that is make sure that the rocket or nothing on the rocket, like the fins or the boosters the separation motors will end up hitting the um, clamps because if they do then that could awake the kraken so yeah that's pretty much all there is to the actual build now i'll just take you through what i did with the staging stack and as with the last one i placed the six outer engines in their first stage and then all the engines for the core stage and the launch clamps in the second so obviously that means that we would have to stage immediately after launch just to make sure that we do decouple the clamps. And as I explained in the last video, that just basically means or in uh, the, what was it, part five, I believe it was, of the, ser the actual series. That just means that we'll put a bit of tension into the clamps before takeoff and therefore we're less likely to drop down instead of going straight up and then anyway back onto the staging stack. So of course we've got all 36 of the separation motors and the decouplers for the side boosters. Then we have the next set of engines with the related decoupler. And as usual, we're going up, just making sure that all the engines are connected to the correct decouplers. The only other thing I've done uh, slightly differently is because we have a long, uh, what is it, nose cone on the top, I've put the decoupler for that after the second stage because this stage should get us up into at least a suborbital trajectory above Kerbin, at which point we would want to get rid of the nose cone uh, and therefore it won't be in the way in the future when we're doing any more of our manoeuvres. Of course the only other thing that I forgot to do was create an action group for the uh, parachute, so I'm just going to do that now. And it's a little bit more complicated because there's so many more parts, but as I said we're going to get the, well we're going to cut the Mark 12s this group and then we will activate or deploy should I say the uh, mark 16 so where are we there we go so yeah this rocket is pretty much ready to launch the only other thing that we might need to do before launching is make sure that our actual kerbals are correct because what I find can happen with this is you sometimes end up with only one Kerbal and quite often they'll end up in the uh, Explorer as well. So I just need to make sure that the command pod is actually full. So we'll pop Jeb, Val and Bill in there. And now, yeah, we are ready to launch. So there is one last thing that uh, I forgot to put on uh, in the earlier part of the build. And we do need a science junior on the lander because we do want to try and get as much science as possible. So for that, uh, we obviously unlocked the extra small science junior junior so we're just going to pop one of these on the side of the lander and just to make sure that it uh, doesn't you know affect aerodynamics or the weight we're just going to move it inboard as well using the rotation and translate tool so yeah that's pretty much all there is to this build um, so, as I've said in the past, this rocket will get us to and from the moon with ease. Uh, at the moment, it's saying we've got well over 9,000 9, meters per second delta V, which is quite a lot. Um, 
I wouldn't always trust the Delta V readouts though because quite often they do seem to uh, be wrong. I mean, I've had times building this rocket where it would say it was somewhere in the region of three or 4,000 Delta V, which is completely wrong, obviously. But anyway, um, that's pretty much all there is to this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please feel free to like and subscribe. And obviously I'd also like it if you'd leave a comment as well and let me know what you thought. But yeah, that's all there is for today and I will see you in the next one.